from Brewster, Massachusetts. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. Coming up, we look at the controversy surrounding bikes having license plates. Oh, I better go. Ah, chopper. <laughs> Hmm, the hidden motor room is rumble on. We've got lots of mud, plus we round up the first ever UCI World Cycling Urban Championships. Yeah, may or may not include the 10 meter traffic light sprint. Find out later. Yeah. But what we will not be doing is looking too closely at this. Why not? I think that's absolutely fantastic. In really? fact, I'm thinking of ordering one. And in Tech of the Week this week, we look at the new Manta 5 hydrofoil bike. Manta 5. Sorry, man. Really it's didn't great. Think you've been to that. Why not? Guys, sorry I uh, couldn't be at the GCN show this week in Bath. I had to come to South Africa. Uh, yeah, I'm here in Cape Town with Team Dimension Data. They're doing uh, a combination with Zwift where they've got an online virtual training camp. Uh, so you can ride along in group rides with the likes of Steve Cummings and Eddie the Boss here who's casually putting out 450 watts just behind me for five minutes. Uh, and if you want to join, you can find all the details of how to do so online. You can also unlock Team Dimension Data Kit there by making some donations which will go towards Quebecer Bikes, which is a very worthy cause indeed. But actually the main reason I'm here is to watch the final of the Zwift Academy. It's down to just three riders and one of them will be riding for Team Dimension Data's Continental Squad in 2018. It's going to be very nerve-wracking for them and very exciting too. So make sure that you stay tuned to social media and to GCN over the coming weeks for that video. This week in the world of cycling, we learned that if you carelessly smash a windscreen with your head as you're getting run over by a car, you can actually get sued for damages. That's incredible. Yep. Oh my God. We also learned, Si, that world champion Peter Sagan has unearthed yet another talent. Another one. Yeah, as a tattoo artist. Hey, I hope the tattoo my friend Javi will do on me will be much better than uh, the one I'm doing on him. I was going to say, you know, that I wouldn't let Peter Sagan anywhere near my inner thigh, and then I remembered that Wout Paul's professional cyclist has actually let you near his inner thigh, so maybe it's just a thing. Yeah, he, pros. he was happy enough, yeah. yeah. Uh, right, we also learned this week that a scary number of people actually think that bikes should have license plates. A survey here in the UK made the headlines when 59% of respondents said that they thought number plates on bikes would be a good idea. Mm. Over to us, outside. Cars have number plates for very good reason, as they make drivers accountable for their actions. Now they're introduced into this country, the United Kingdom, back in 1904, as numbers of cars grew and it became increasingly apparent that they posed a serious risk to life. Now accident statistics from the early 20th century are absolutely staggering. But now there are calls, very loud ones from some quarters, that they think bikes need number plates too. It's a worry, isn't it? Because it wouldn't just be our town bikes, it's also gonna be our posh road bikes as well. There you go, so we got you one knocked up especially, mate. Are you serious? Yeah. Chopper? It was pretty cheap as well. That might not be quite as simple as just registering your bike. There could be a tax associated with it as well. Now, if you want to register a speed pedelec, so a turbo-assisted e-bike, you have to pay the same amount as a scooter. Yeah, and it's not just tax either, because potentially there'd be insurance as well, which then turns the whole experience of riding a bike into something mired by bureaucracy. Yeah, can you imagine registering and taxing kids on bikes? Well, why the call for it in the first place? Well, it's because quite a lot of motorists are pissed. Yeah, because it seems like we're above the law, because we are untraceable and therefore able to commit traffic offences at will and with no fear of repercussion. Yeah, so running red lights, riding bikes without lights, running stop signs. Yeah, and there's that whole thing about, and I use inverted commas here, road tax. And that technically, Si, isn't a thing. There's vehicle tax and lots of cyclists own cars. Yeah, so we pay vehicle tax too. It's just so rubbish. It is rubbish. T uh, bikes are human powered. Kids ride bikes. People can't afford to buy cars ride bikes. They're liberating, and in our humble opinion, the possible solution to a lot of current world problems. Yeah, bikes and cities 
go hand in hand. Bikes make cities cleaner, nicer, safer places to be. And actually, if you look at the highest ranked cities on the quality of life index, they almost all have higher rates of cycling as well. Yeah, so what can we do about it then? Well, let's sincerely hope that nobody in their right mind ever passes a law like that through. No. But we have to be honest, there's still quite a lot of discord amongst motorists, which raises concerns. So what we have to do somehow is try and ease the friction between motorists and cyclists. And that is going to be a pretty difficult thing to do. Yeah, I think we have to go further than just keeping our fingers crossed, don't we? Mm. I think, in part, we're trying to rise above that friction where possible. But then I definitely think joining our local bicycle advocacy groups to try and make our voice heard collectively would be a really smart move. I agree with you, site, And we'd love to hear what you think as well down in the comments section. What about hugging motorists? Like, show them that we kind of care. You know, we're just one, one group. We could just all hug, hug a motorist. If every GCN subscriber hugged a motorist, there'd be 1.2 million motorists that would feel like they'd be cared for by That'd be cyclists. one way to start the ball rolling. Yeah. I mean, just thinking about it now, so I'm actually a motorist as well as a cyclist, so. Well, I'm in Lycra. Do you want to, should we try? Should we have a quick Come on, comment? This could be the solution. I, I, it feels good actually. It'd be weird at traffic lights, wouldn't it? Warmer. Can you imagine that? I know. Just traffic light turns red, open a car door, give them a hug. Hug a motorist. I think you might get in trouble. We might do, might we? Yeah. Should you go back to the studio? Yeah, I'm freezing. It's now time for cycling shorts. Cycling Shorts now, and last week the organisers of the prestigious Ghent Wevelgem race presented New Zealand pro cyclist Jack Bauer and Sam Bewley with a trophy to commemorate the courage and sacrifices made by the New Zealand Cycle Corps who fought during World War I in France and Belgium. Yeah, which included defending the iconic climb of the Kemmelberg, used, of course, in Ghent Wevelgem. Now, the trophy itself is an actual cobble from the climb mounted on a piece of wood, which is actually timber used in the trenches. Now, the trophy itself will be awarded annually to the under-23 road champ of New Zealand. That's incredibly poignant, that, isn't it? What a great way of remembering. It certainly is. Now, sticking with Flanders, our friends at Cycling in Flanders, which is part of the tourist board, have got a brand new, rather cool website. Yeah, normally we wouldn't give much of a shout out to a website, but I think Flanders holds a special place in the heart of well, most cyclists, I'd say. Uh, on it, they've got loads of great routes to download that will link up the most iconic roads in the region. And they've also got a bucket list feature that means you can tick them off on Strava one by one as you do them. It's kind of mm. cool, really. Now, sticking with a great place to ride, did we mention that we're in Taiwan? I'm not sure we have mentioned that we're in Taiwan this week. No, we haven't. Well, let's mention it now. Yeah. While we're in Taiwan, we had a guest direct sportif in the form of ex-pro Phil Guyman. Hang on, so what's that? That's a couple of beers. Is that wind juice? Well, you've got one. I, I'm, I'm retired. I'm allowed. Okay. Oh, so no, no beer. No, there's no beer. Sorry, sorry mate. <clears throat> All right. Perhaps by way of an apology for getting rather cross with us in the team meeting, he gave us a copy of his book. He did. I've read it, and I really enjoyed it. Actually, genuinely gripped. Uh, it's an account of his last three seasons in a pr as a pro, two of which he was in the World Tour. Uh, quite a few trials and tribulations, but there's one bit. It's been causing a bit of controversy. Yeah, in the book, he repeated the rumours that Fabian Cancellara back in 2010 used a hidden motor in his bicycle. Yeah, now, because uh, this has been picked up by the cycling press, the new UCI president, perhaps looking to make a bit of a statement early on in his tenure, has uh, decided to launch an investigation into Cancellara's bike in 2010. Fabian Cancellara, meanwhile, has responded with notice from his lawyers that he wants the book to be withdrawn from sale and an apology from Gaiman. The boss of World Tour Team Movistar, Eusebio Nzue, has suggested that World Tour teams should be allowed rider substitutions during Grand Tours. Mm, let me explain it just a little bit further. What he, is ex what, he, what he is suggesting is that in Grand Tours, the first week of Grand Tour, if a rider crashes or is ill, they're replaced from a pool of three other riders. Now, not only that, he's also suggested that if a young rider gets tired or ill during a race, they actually can take a couple of days off and then rejoin. God knows how that would ever work, but the reason he stated these things is because he thinks cycling should become more human. That's such a load of rubbish. No, I'm sorry, I don't disagree that cycling should show humanity, but that's just so rubbish, isn't it? I mean, for a start, young riders, develop them slowly, do what they've always done and pull them out 10 days into a grand tour. Or get my life light race programme. Exactly, yeah. yeah that isn't a problem, then if they're concerned about riders crashing early on in stage races, 
the rides collectively could just take fewer risks rather than then saying, well, you can take more risks, it doesn't matter because, you know, the team can bolster it. Like, there'd be nothing to lose. I think it's probably just a statement, maybe taken out of context, but probably just a wealthy team looking to maintain their advantage over a less wealthy team, so like Sky, Movistar, Katusha, big budgets. Sorry, Matt, but that Sorry, really mate. does make me look I just bit. sometimes wish you'd say what you mean. That's yeah, all. no, I, I, next time I, you know, I won't... Anyway, you just calm down for a minute and I'll give the folks at home a little bit more information on what's happening over in the World Tour. There's Thanks, been another Thanks. couple of transfers, one in particular, Danny Moreno, the former Flesh Will Lawn winner, no less, is transferring from Movistar, so trading the navy blue of Movistar for the pink, the green and the white of EF Education First, Drapak, powered by Cannondale, where I think he's going to provide, well, be a handy lieutenant for Rigoboto around in the mountains. I think he could. Now, mm. speaking of Rigo, we saw him earlier in the year busting some moves over on Instagram. So I wondered whether he might like this, Matt, a bike-mounted boombox. A BMBB. The very same. Now, I didn't know it was a thing until I read an article on The Guardian uh, that showed a whole craze in Sicily of young people sticking basically massive stereos on bikes. It does actually look pretty cool. Doesn't it, Just? If you want to see some more action with said BMBBs uh, in Sicily on bikes, there's some uh, links down there. You find them on YouTube, actually. No, no, so I'm not sure We're not posting any links, but no. you can find them if you search them. You know what I mean? Yeah. They'll understand. Hopefully. <laughs> Depends how young they are. Yeah. Mm. Right, straight from Bike Mounted Boomboxes, it's time for Tenuous Cycling Celebrity of the Week. Oh, who is it this week, Si? This week? It's Will Ferrell, Whoa. anchorman himself, Ron Whoa. Burgundy, because he and a bunch of mates cycled from Monterey down to Santa Barbara, down the Californian coast, Cool, 150 miles, 10,000 feet of climbing, four days riding. Nice work, Will. Don't act like you're not impressed. What was that, man? Hey, you, you wearing Sex Panther? Of course I am. Good news this week for those of you who ride on Zwift. Zwift have just launched group workouts. This means that you can ride with riders of all different abilities, yet in the same group, and not be left behind. Or go ahead depending. Uh, the way that works is actually you work towards a percentage of your FTP. So essentially I could ride with a world tour rider or I could ride with a complete novice. If someone drops a wattage bazooka on you, as long as you're all working at those percentages, you don't get dropped. Ride on. Okay, now Sai briefly mentioned this earlier on in the show. It's the Manta 5 Hydrofoiler. Now according to Manta 5, it's just like riding a bike, except on water. Uh, there's two different modes as well. You've got standard pedal power and also, get this, there's a 400 watt silent motor built in. So you could just pedal away, click on that motor, you're gone. I'm not a great swimmer, not ashamed to admit that. I think I would like to quite try one of these out actually with our friends over at the Global Triathlon Network just to make sure that their swim training is up to speed with 400 watts. They're not going to keep up, are they? That's if I don't sink. The first ever UCI Urban World Championships took place last week in China, bringing together 230 riders from 35 countries, all battling for the iconic rainbow bands. But in BMX, trials and mountain bike eliminator, all held in city centre circuits. Yeah, it was a shame, wasn't it, that there was no 10 metre traffic light sprint competition. Yeah, you That's pretty right. urban. Yeah, yeah. Uh, however, there was some amazing skills on display. There was. I think we should have a look. Now, honestly, man, do you think it's good that the UCI is branching out, or is it a little bit weird? I'm half and half. I yeah. think they've got enough mountain bike events as it is. I think they're all great, uh, but I do like BMX and trials. I, I just. I'm just in awe of the skill. I love it. Yeah, see, I'm worried it's a little bit like, you know, middle-aged men trying to be cool. You know, yeah, be a mixed freestyle. If anyway. I could do what they could do at my age. Well, that would be, be cool. Yeah, it yeah, would that, be cool. Yeah, that would be but. great. Have you seen how fast those mountain bike guys clip in? Oh, my word. Thanks for that, mate. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> now, I think it's a little bit strange having a rainbow jersey up for grabs for BMX freestyle. That's mm. a bit weird. But having said that, another sport 
that looks super weird from the outside, but it's flipping amazing, oh, is cyclocross. And we had an absolute banging weekend of racing, a particularly muddy and epic super prestige at Harborough with two fantastic races. It was wall-to-wall -wall mud, wasn't it? And it was Wout Van Aert, the current world champion, who finally got the better of arch nemesis Mathieu van der Poel, but it was only because Mathieu van der Poel suffered a mechanical very late into the race. Toon Art snuck through for second place, whilst van der Poel gamely held on and just about managed third place. Yeah, the women's race was an absolute nail biter as well. It came down to sprint finish, ultimately taken by Ellen van Looy of Belgium, with Belgian Kim van Steen third, 21 seconds back. Slightly concerned though, Matt. Mm. No sign of Maud Cap things no. at either Where race yet. Gone? And I just worry that maybe we have laid a GCN curse on it, because we did say, of course, that she was a name that we were going to have to be saying a lot of this season. We asked for your help in pronouncing it, and now she's disappeared. Hashtag where's Maud? Sticking for a minute with racing, over the last few days, it's been the latest round of the UCL World Track Cup held at the Manchester Velodrome. And we're going to reward this week's pro wattage bazooka to... Matthew Glater of Australia for setting a brand new sea level kilometre world record in an absolutely blistering time of 59.970 seconds, which in old money equates to just over 60 kilometres an hour. Just over. That is standing start. Seriously quick. Isn't standing it? start under a minute. You know what? He would have cleaned up. God at UCI Urban Cycling World Championships in the 10 metre traffic light sprint competition, wouldn't he? Surely. He'd about to have a parachute, wouldn't he, to slow down? Unbelievable. Anyway, fair play. And we've also got, of course, this week's GCN viewer, What is Bazooka? Mm. And it goes to Michael Go for this sterling effort on his rollers on his track bike. Look at that cadence! He's even suggested a cadence bazooka hashtag, which we don't oh, award. No, we don't do that. Unfortunately. No. no, but we've inferred wattage from your cadence. That wasn't speeded up, was it, the film? Under special effects. It's time now for hack forward slash boy of the week. We're going to start off with this from somebody called Coach Brook over oh, yeah. on Twitter. Now, Sai, what do you reckon to that? I mean, uh, there is a lot going on. It's yeah. clearly a child seat. Um, what impresses me the most, aside from the, the, the obvious safety issues, is the amazing wheelbase. I mean, look at that. Of all the things to talk about, you yeah. picked out the wheelbase. Yeah. <laughs> that is it's utterly terrifying. It is, isn't it? There's like a, a child's frame attached to the front, what used to be the front of the bike, which then becomes an extra front of bike so that you can fit a kid on top of your steerer tube. And Yeah, and you are gonna need to have arms, either like a gorilla or Mr. Tickle to even hold those bars, aren't you? Of, I all, mean... <laughs> of all the things to bodge in life, a way of transporting children yeah. doesn't strike me as a sensible thing to do. Let me a good point I, there. You know, well don't raised. take risks with, with child. Safety. Although, uh, please keep sending them in. Just maybe don't <laughs> use them on the open road with a child on board. The best thing is that's actually for sale, that one, uh, judging by the link on the app. Flip it's on Craigslist. Well, there so, we go. Uh, hopefully, no one's bought that one. Okay. A bit more sensible now. All right, time. yeah, come on. This one comes from Don Priest. Uh, this is for his Resistant Materials GCN project, he says. Uh, and it's a very nice iPad stand. Although, when you look at the back of said iPad mm. stand, it's clearly made out of a uh, crutch. So, uh, well, yeah, clearly just a it's, crutch. It's just a crutch. But I suppose, you know, yeah, kind of. uh, you get an adjustable head on there. You know, the angle is, is different. You could adjust the height. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's good recycling. Now, this one is another, uh, well, is it a hack? Is it a bodge? Don't know yet. It's obviously a bike lawnmower. Uh, apparently, according to the son of Sam, who sends it in on Instagram, the shovel at the front doesn't work. The lawnmower does. And the salt grinder attached to the top tube does work just don't know why it works. I've got a theory. Oh, yeah. First off, I must say this is one of my favorite <laughs> hacks forward slash bodges ever. Is I it a hack or is it a bodge? Uh, it's a hack. Oh, nice. It's a hack. But I think, uh, clearly a lawnmower, clearly a bicycle attached to it, uh, but I think what it's for, you've got the pepper the, the pepper grinder there, will put so rock salt in, you could grind the salt. So almost like a salt grinder. Yes, yeah, a salt grinder basically, but I think that's a mini snow plow. So you clear your driveway whilst pedaling forwards and also put the salt on so it wouldn't freeze up afterwards. That's my theory. Hey, mate, people, who, people who live in uh, colder climates than ours, perhaps you could confirm or deny whether or not you ever use a lawnmower to clear snow, uh, like Matt's, Matt's. It's just a theory. Crackpot theory. Uh, theory. Right, we'll rattle through the next couple. Sutherland Rob uh, sent in this really very smartly mended uh, broken top tube. Uh, that looks like simple electrical tape. I don't agree with the word smartly, but uh, there we go. Well, yeah, do not ride that. Mm. That's uh, utterly terrifying. But this last one sent in by James pro. Lawson Craig. This now, good. this is class. This is a new saddlebag 
with uh, entirely made by himself from a lightweight dry sack and he's attached a BOA system closure from a mountain bike that shoe. That's almost kickstart material right there if you That's ask me. That's very cool indeed. Would you, would you buy that? I'd buy it. Yeah, I would buy a saddlebag that like that. Yeah, that, uh, because, yeah, retention is always an issue. I mean, you can, that's just great. I mean, that looks neat, looks pro. And nice bike too, I'd as well. Buy it. Yeah, a lot of pin out there, mate. Anyway, <laughs> finally we have this oh, we haven't finished from yet. Wesley Sorry. Ham. Um, how to store chews when riding. All you need to do is just lick and stick. I need to learn my stamina. Yes, you do. That's very, very high indeed. I don't trust myself to do it right. But look at that. That is cool. Lick and stick. Jelly sweets all over his top tube. I tell you what, that's ingenious. I that's that. a hack right there. I do love that lick and stick though. Lick and stick. Caption competition now. And first of all, we're going to give you the results of last week's photo, which was this. Ooh. Now, Matt, can you get a Camelback water bottle for our winner, please? I will indeed. Out of our stash. Obviously, we get a particularly shiny one. Thank you very much. Here our favourite caption out of all the many hundreds you left last week was this one from Stephen Turnbull. Rider misinterprets his coach's advice of bury yourself. <laughs> I think it's absolutely genius. He's not very good at it. He could have dug a deeper hole. <laughs> I but... don't know. It looks like he's trying pretty hard, Matt. Anyway, congratulations to Stephen. That GCN Camelback water bottle is winging its way to you. Right. This week's photo to get your tea sucked into. Yeah, I'm going to start you off, if you don't mind. Go for it, uh, mate. Oi, stop thief! You'd probably do better than that, can't you? Yeah. Set the bar very low. I'm going to take that out of your way. <clears throat> if you think you can beat Matt, then simply put your caption in the comment section down below. We'll go through them and we'll find our favourites. Just like Stevens. I'll give myself a caption. Not your Stevens, obviously. No. It's the previous Steven that actually won with a great caption. Before we do what's coming up on the channel this week, we've got a couple of cracking comments that we found underneath last week's news show. Uh, this one comes from Thomas Abbott, who says, at 11.10, Gerard Ruman is clearly a fan of one by glasses as well as chain rings. <laughs> yeah, well, there was quite a lot of comments about Gerard Ruman's uh, glasses last week. Uh, Beastie Carrion as well. That bloke wants to get rid of everything. Front mechs, extra chain rings, the arms off his glasses. What's next? It's true that. What is next, is she? I like the way you called him that bloke as well. <laughs> yeah. Gerard Ruman. Yeah, a bit more right. respect, please. Anyway, coming up on the channel this week, on Wednesday we have our winter riding mistakes. Most of the time, if you want to brave the elements when it's cold and it's wet, that's fine. But if there's any ice, we'd advise that you give it a miss altogether. Definitely. It's just not worth it. You are effectively gambling with the prospect of weeks or maybe even months off the bike for the sake of missing one day out on the road. On Thursday, we have our top 10 funny and weird cycling quotes. Uphill, downhill. I like that. Huh? And on Friday, it's Ask GC Anything. Yeah, on Saturday this week, it's a pro bike, or an ex-pro bike, it's Dan's Trek in Monda, yeah. filmed out in South Africa, because uh, that's where Dan currently is. Not too bad. Yeah, all right for some, minute. Sunday, I was actually, it's not just down out in South Africa. I was actually in Italy last week visiting Elite, so uh, makers of some cracking turbo trainers as well as water bottles and bottle cages. Uh, so we've got a factory tour from there coming up. And then on Monday, we're back in the maintenance set. And on Tuesday. From Woodstock, Vermont. Welcome to the GCN show. <laughs> We're nearing the end of the show, but we've still got time for Extreme Corner. And this week we're back at the Urban Cycling Games. We're going to check in on the winner of the BMX Freestyle, Logan Martin's <sighs> final run. This is good. Sigh, in my humble opinion, that was a flawless run. Really? Absolutely flawless. And that yeah. coming from a former BMX rider? Yeah, I was briefly uh, semi pro for the crew of Ghost Riders before I had an unfortunate accident. Oh, no. Got a landing wrong and I broke my nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You that, really did break your nose, didn't that, you? That hurt. Ouchie. Yeah. yeah that's quite hurt. People think I thought I'd been beaten up. Oh, well, you did, but just by a BMX track. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, on that note, I guess it's probably time to say it's the end of the GCN yeah. show for this week. Uh, do make sure you subscribe to GCN. So you said you're going to go. And also, give the show a big thumbs up as well. We'd appreciate that. Yeah, and if you need a little bit of winter inspiration, how about clicking just down here for our top 10 inspirational, inspirational, sorry, cycling quotes. Yeah, and if bike tech is what inspires you, then how about checking out this absolute belter 
It's the Factor 001 Aston Martin bike. It's mint, isn't it? James Bond's bike. Really? 